Hello and welcome fellow bookworms and film fans. Welcome to this week's episode of The Contented Narrative. We will be looking at Howl's Moving Castle. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Like, it's just, it's just a beautiful version. This is from, this, this book is from the Folio Society. And uh, someone gave me the money to be able to buy it so I could uh, splurge a little bit. Um, this one is also very special because Howl's Moving Castle, um, the 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 waltz from it was actually mine and my husband's first wedding dance as well so it's always held a very special place in my heart and i don't know if you can see but the little candle there is a house moving castle candle that my friend daisy got me for christmas a few years ago still haven't lit it um we've also got like little memorabilia everywhere else anyway so this uh book was written by diane wine jones it was published in 1986 it was then adapted to screen in 2004 um, and we'll be looking at three things as we normally do. We'll be looking at the how good is the book, how good is the film and how good does the plot take from the book. So, film first. This film is a Studio Ghibli or Ghibli, however you want to pronounce it, treasure. It is beautiful. It is stunningly done. It's got great voice actors. Now, I... I tend to watch animated films if they're in another language I tend to watch them in English rather that like I watch them dubbed rather than subtitled if it's a live action film I will watch it subtitled not dubbed um the, everything about this film is a gem the storyline is amazing the characters are well-rounded and visually is absolutely a masterpiece the film follows Sophie a young girl who's cast by the witch of the waste uh, to be old so she kind of just goes with it starts off on her on her adventures and as she's working in Howl's castle and slowly kind of falling for Howl as it were she becomes younger again and, and she kind of regains her youth um and Howl falls for her as well and it's absolutely just lovingly done because it's not a typical you know boy meets girl girl doesn't want to be with boy boy professes love girl realizes that it's not she is basically for most of the film a ratty old woman <laughs> they're like argumentative and everything like that and yet Hal sees beyond that and they become slowly to, to start falling for each other um this film has you laughing it has you crying it has you enchanted from the very first moment you you watch it to the very last second that you watch it and it leaves you satisfied by the end it's it's a happy conclusion I would a hundred percent recommend this film to absolutely anybody it gets a huge 10 out of 10 for me um there is honestly nothing wrong with this film i love it two bits now this book as i said i got this book from the folio society now let's see if i can find one of the pictures because honestly the pictures are just beautifully done i did post this on my instagram page as well so you know if you do follow me on instagram contented narrative have a look because honestly the folio society do brilliant brilliant books they are a little bit pricey which is why i only have one i'm hoping to get more soon but yeah honestly worth every penny so thank you dad for giving me the money <laughs> so the artwork is beautiful the story is beautiful um and the story is a work of art as well like it is so brilliantly written and it's such a great little it's like an adventure story meets a romance meets like a magic and it's just it's but and yet it's easy to follow like so again you have the main protagonist as a woman who's been turned old before her time and again she just gets on with it um, and she's a great character as well because she's not just there as a love interest she's there and she solves everything she fixes everything it's because of her that everyone kind of turns back to normal and the witch of the waste is destroyed um honestly every time i opened it and was reading a chapter i couldn't wait to get to the next chapter it was absolutely brilliant kept me captivated to the very end um and each character is very well fleshed out and i love the fact as well that in the in the book you don't see this in a film and i will mention it later in the plot comparison but in the book Hal's family is from wales <laughs> so they live in this magical country um but he goes through this magic door and ends up in wales where his family lives and where he is from which i find quite hilarious because christian bale uh voiced hal in the film and he himself is welsh so i couldn't put this book down i really couldn't and from from honestly from the first page to the last page it was absolutely brilliant this book gets a nine out of ten for me both for presentation and for the plot 
So let's get on to the plot. So they both start in a very similar way. So Sophie is working in the hat shop. She uses Mayday to go and see Letty. Now Letty, I think in the film is a friend, but in the book it is one of her two sisters. Um, in both you hear rumours about Wizard Howl and the horrible things he's supposed to do, like sucking the souls from young women. Um, and as she's on her way to Letty, in the, she, she kind of gets accosted. Now in the film, she's accosted by some drunk individuals. Uh, she's then getting she then gets rescued by Hal. Hal then takes her off and and she's absolutely fine in the book a tall blonde haired gentleman asks her for a drink Sophie pretty much runs away from him and goes to Letty uh whoever however is her sister Martha because Letty and Martha have switched um places and then we learn later that it was Hal was the tall blonde haired gentleman but we kind of figured that anyway so anyway, in the film, when she gets back to the hat shop, the Witch of the Waste is waiting. Um, and after seeing her with Hal, uh, she now curses Sophie to become an old woman. Now, because the Witch of the Waste in the film is absolutely in love with him and, you know, wants his heart, basically. Um, in the book, however, Sophie ponders her life um, and her stepmom as well. Before anything else happens, she's, she ponders whether or not she should be doing something else with her life. Because she realises that her stepmom might not have the best interests at heart um, because of something her sister Martha said. Um, and she thinks of leaving before her account encounter with the Witch of the Waste and then the Witch of the Waste curses her. So in both she seems resigned to her fate as an old person and then decides to just head off on her own. And off she pops. Um, and as she's heading off on her own she finds a scarecrow upturned in the hedge and rescues it. Now in both it is a living scarecrow. In the film... It follows her pretty much from the beginning and she's not scared of it. She kind of just, again, just accepts it. In the book, however, she becomes almost terrified of this scarecrow that keeps turning up. So anyway, she comes across Hal's moving castle um, and she decides to just go into it because what's the worst that can happen? Now, in the book, when she gets in, she comes across the apprentice Michael straight away and she ends up dozing in front of the fire. Um, and then she ends up kind of becoming a cleaning lady and, and sticking there. In the film, she only comes across the fire at first, which is Calcifer. And then the next morning, she meets the young apprentice. And again, she kind of introduces herself as the cleaning person and just stays there. Um, so in both, she's now the cleaning lady for Hal. Um, and boy, does this strange, strange little house need cleaning. It is described as a thorough mess in the book. Um, and in the film, we can see it with our own eyes. And she goes about it with such vigour. It's honestly amazing. Like she, she's so vigorously cleaning. Um, that Hal always make always makes a joke of it in the book about her being like so, you know, aggressive in her cleaning. Uh, in the film, it's pretty much almost done in a day. So anyway, in both, she ends up bending Calcifer, who's a fire demon, to basically her will to cook breakfast, uh, which impresses Hal because according to Hal, Calcifer doesn't do anything for anyone, um, and even Hal has to be like a bit like, could you mate? Um. So he just kind of accepts the way of the world. Now, in this point in the book, Sophie realises that Howl is the guy that she met on that May Day. Um, now, in the book, Howl answers the door. So there's a door that has loads of different knobs, different colours and different places. And Howl kind of shows this, how this works. Um, in the film, it's Michael Hill deals with the door, which shows different towns. Um, so in the book, she seems to clash with Howell a little bit more than they do in the film, uh, but they sort of just accept each other. Um, in the film, it, it's less of a clash, um, but there is an undercurrent of war in both the film and the book. Now, the book it never comes to all-out war, um, whereas in the book, in the film, it does. Um, but there is sort of like that undercurrent going throughout the book. Now. In both, Howl throws a hissy fit because he's quite a vain individual uh, in the, uh, and it's because his hair goes ginger. So he was blonde, it goes ginger. Now in the film, he turns it back black and he actually quite likes it. And you know, in the book, it goes back to sort of like a, a blondish color and then he turns it black and all over. But because of this, he throws a hissy fit and turns himself almost into the, like slime, which pretty much almost kills Calcifer and pretty much almost destroys the house. So Sophie snaps him out of it by basically saying, you're being a child, grow up, man. Which is fair enough. Um, and obviously that kind of snaps him to it. Now, in the book, 
the underlying reason of why he throws his hissy fit is because he's trying to make one of Sophie's sisters say she loves him um and she doesn't and then the hair dye mixes up or something in the film it is just because the hair dye mixes up um I mean to be fair I'm saying he's a child but we've all I say we all anyone that's had their hair done I can guarantee everyone at one point in their life will have had a bad hair dye job where it's not quite turned out the colour you wanted and you kind of sat there wishing you could say something and wishing you could cry and, and, and stop your feet. So I kind of get that. And we have the return of the scarecrow in the book now. And again, Sophie is terrified. In the film, he just, they kind of accept him and, you know, call him turnip heaven and everything. So it turns out in the book that Michael um, is in love with Sophie's other sister and plans to marry her. So in the book now you've got Hal courting Letty and Michael in love with Martha. In the film none of this kind of happens. Um, but in both Hal is requested to come to the castle to speak to the king. So Hal decides to send Sophie to the castle to talk to the king on his behalf and basically blacken his name. So... In the book, Hal goes off to talk to Sophie's sister, um, but then Sophie follows to talk to Letty herself. Um, however, her and Michael ends up getting to Letty the same time that Howell gets to Letty, and they find out that Letty actually knows that Howell is Howell, um, and is using him to learn about more about magic. So Sophie feels a little bit safer about one of her sisters. And you also get a bit in the book as well where Michael and Sophie work together on a spell and try to catch a falling star which we realise later on is actually what happened with Howell. He caught the falling star, which is Calcifer. Um, and then a deal was struck where Calcifer gets his heart. Um, now in the book, Howell buys new items for Sophie and Michael before they head to the palace because he wants them to look all fancy schmancy. Um, and it's actually quite nice that he does that. In, in the film, he just caught, kind of freshens up Sophie's dress a little bit before sending her off. But I think it's because Howell's realising that Sophie is, is more than just address um but also as well in the book you, in the book you get shown what the black mark on the on the knob is in the film you don't it's basically how it goes into there and and you can't follow you if you find out that this is actually Hal's family and it takes them through to wales obviously Sophie and Michael don't have a clue about Wales and they're, they're kind of they, they see TVs and video game systems and they ride in a fast car and it, it unsettles them and they don't quite like it um so anyway the, in the film Sophie at this point is going to the palace alone uh without Hal without Michael and she ends up having to go up a hundred and one stairs honestly there's so many stairs um but she meets the witch of the waste as well who's been summoned and the Witch of the Waste kind of has to go up without magic and she's quite a large voluptuous woman and she's very very much melted by the time she gets to the top um and the Witch of the Waste pretty much almost dies as well so in the book the black mark leads them as I said sorry I do apologize I know that um but then when they go to Wales they do collect a spell that was lost from them and then they realize as well that this curse has been put on Howell and it's kind of getting to the old to the end of his curse and we realize that Howell is actually like a thousand years old um now in the book we meet Howell's old trainer before Sophie goes to the castle because Howell wants her to be trained on how to present herself properly um before she meets the king in the film however at this point she's talking with the king's magical advisor and ends up being rescued by Howell as the king's magical advisor tries to kind of trick her so however Sophie does also bring the Witch of the Waste and a dog that has attached itself to her back to Hal's moving castle in the film um which obviously is a little bit dangerous but the Witch of the Waste is pretty much not even not even a threat anymore um in the book she's now heading to see the king with Howell and Michael to blacken Hal's name so the king doesn't want him for anything difficult however it kind of backfires and the king then decides to employ him anyway so she meets the king, it doesn't go as planned, uh, so she tries to head back to Hal's castle but she ends up meeting the Witch of the Waste who is a lot more powerful and a lot more of an enemy in the book than she is in the film. Um, and we find out that the Witch of the Waste has killed Hal's old advisor as well which is very unfortunate. Um, so 
she then goes back again to the castle then gets picked up by michael and howl and they make them their, their way back and then they realize that they're gonna have to move the castle because the witch of the waste now knows about several of the entrances uh, so in the film at this point everything is settling down and getting into a routine the war is now all encompassing as well um and howl contracts a cold in the book in the film, it's because he almost loses himself when he goes too far into his bird shape. So that's what kind of causes them to be ill. Um, now in the book as well, you've, we've now somehow picked up a dog who was a human and he's been turned into a dog. And he's come aboard Howl's Castle, as, as you do. Um, however, in both, they do move the castle doors, one of which becomes Sophie's old hat shop that she used to work at. So Hal, still full of cold, goes to his old mentor's funeral in disguise in the book. However, he's found by the Witch of the Waste and there ensues a huge battle between the two. As I said, she's more of a villain in the book than she ever is in the film. Um, there isn't really a clear winner, uh, but Howl is feeling really sorry for himself because you know how he is. Um, so in the film, the war and the rogue wizards try to attack the castle and Sophie manages to get everyone outside and it severs the doors, but it also sort of destroys the castle as well. So in the film, I did notice that Howl appears to be slowly falling for Sophie, which is making her younger, but in the book he seems a lot more callous until the very end. So in the book, she, um, the Witch of the Waste gets someone from Wales to try and intrude in Howl's castle. Um, and basically lays a trap for Howl as well. So Howl has now turned the dog back into a man um, and is getting a little bit of information from this dog man and realising that this dog man isn't all the person that he should be. Um, so in the film, Sophie has removed everyone from the house, including Cal Sofer, this has caused the whole thing to collapse. Um, and in the film, in the book, sorry, Sophie's two sisters and stepmoms, her founder, have come to visit and Sophie seems almost happy that everyone's there to see her. Um, however, the Witch of the Waste has laid a trap and so Sophie then decides to go off and deal with the Witch of the Waste so that Hal and his family will be safe. So in the film, Sophie is shown the past and the deal that Calcifer and Howell struck and how to fix it. In the book, the Scarecrow now becomes a messenger for the witch. Um, in the film, he's a lost prince under a spell. In the book, he's also a lost prince, but he's under a spell and he's been changed around. Um, no, sorry, I do lie. The Scarecrow in the book is actually an old magician that went missing. Um, so we, then we find out the Scarecrow was helping the previous victim of the witch um, and the Dogman is part prince, part wizard, part God knows what. Um, so when the Scarecrow becomes a prince again in the film, he goes off um, and stops the ongoing war. Now, before this happens, Sophie goes off for the trap to try and save, to, to try and go across the witch. Um, the, the witch ends up being completely destroyed by Howl and Sophie. And that's when we find out that you've got the wizard Solomon, you've got the prince, the prince has gone off to stop the war and everything. Um, in the film, it's due to a kiss from Sophie that turns the wizard the, the scarecrow back into the prince and then goes off and stops the war um so in the book you get a final showdown with the witch's fire demon um however she loses as sophie breaks the contract between calcifer and howl and gives howl his heart back but calcifer still survives so the film ends with howl michael sophie and the witch of the waste living in a new house with calcifer the book ends with Prince Justin being returned to normal, Wizard Solomon being returned to normal, um, Howl and Sophie ending up together, and Calcifer coming back. So both narratives are beautifully told. It gives you magic, adventure, love, fairy tales. However, they tend to take their own paths to get there, as I see a lot with these book-to-film adaptations. The main characters being very similar, but the story seems to almost dip in and out of each other. So I think for the plot, it gets a 5 out of 10 from me. Now, obviously, this is my own opinion. So if you agree or disagree with anything that I say, please leave it below in the comments. If you'd like me to do a book to film adaptation or a book review that you've got on your mind, again, leave it below in the comments. Um, and don't forget to click subscribe so you're alerted whenever a new video becomes available. But until then, remember to always keep it contento. <laughs>